Hello there, you yeah, are welcome to another episode of To The Point Wood. In this episode, we will look at how to keep a user logged in in our application even when the app is closed or refreshed. We will do this using async storage and also context. So let's get started. We will start by installing a couple of packages. First of all, you have to install async storage. Now in addition to async storage, we install expo uploading. As for context, we will get it from react. So the concept of what we are going to do is that whenever a user sign up or sign in, we are going to store all the credentials of the user in async storage. Now whenever the app is starting, that is when it has been closed or refreshed, we will make sure to check async storage whether there are some credentials existing already. If the credentials exist already, then we'll fetch those credentials and use them to populate our welcome page. That is, the user will go directly to the welcome page without having to enter the details to log in again. Now what you are going to do with the expo uploading is that you are going to use it to put the application on hold by using it to display the splash screen whenever you are trying to fetch the data from the async storage. So if you are not done fetching the data from the async storage, the app will not start but rather show the splash screen. For context, we are going to use it as a means to pass the data to all our components. So once we are able to fetch some details from the async storage, we are going to put it in the context so that it can be accessed in any component that we want to use the data in. So let's head to the app.js file and import the expo uploading and also async storage. Now to monitor when our app is ready to launch, that is when the ASIC storage has been checked successfully, we will use state here. So let's import the use state hook from React. We will call our first state app ready. And we will give it an initial value of false. Now if our app is not ready, we want to return the app loading component. Now this component will take a few properties. The first property is that a sync. This will take a function that should run when our app is open. The next property is unfinished. This will also run when the start to seek function is done. Now for the unfinished, we will use it to set the app ready to true. Now the last property is on error. Now we will use this to create a one whenever there is an error. Now for the static sync, we will pass a function that we use to check the async storage for any credentials that are existing. So let's create the function. We will call it check login credentials. And we will pass it to the static sync. Now we use the get item method on async storage. Now we pass a key to it. This will be the key that we use to store our credentials in the async storage. Now for this app, our key will be flower crib credentials. This will return a promise. 
You can go ahead to handle the catch block. Now in the dam block, we receive the result. Now we check if the result is now or it has some content. Now if the result is not now, we want to set the value as a state of our application. So let's create another state variable. We'll call it stored credentials. So if the result is not now, we set the credentials to the result. Now for async storage, we cannot store anything apart from strings in it. So even if we store an object in it, it has to be stringified. So whenever we are fetching the results from the async storage, we will make use of json.pass to pass it back into an object. Else if the result is now. We just set the stored credentials to now. Now once we have done this, we need to make sure that the value of the stored credentials that we have here can be accessed by all our components and that is where the contest comes in. So let's go into the components directory and create a component for our context. We will call it credentials contest. Inside this, we import the hook create context from React. Now let's create a context by using the hook. Now the create context hook will take an object and for now we pass two parameters to it. The first one will be our stored credentials and the second one will be a method to set the values of our stored credentials. We we'll use the same name as the state variables in our app.js file. For now the initial value will just be an empty object. This will map to an empty function body. Now let's import the credentials context in our app.js file. Now to be able to pass the values that we have into the context, we make use of the provider that comes with context. So we create a wrapper credentials contest.provider and wrap it around our root stack. Once we do that, we'll be able to set the initial values of our contest. This will take a value property, and this value that we pass should be of the same format as how we defined it while creating the contest. So we'll pass an object of the stored credentials and the set stored credentials. Now all this we are doing should not affect any of the UI, that's why I am not bothered about refreshing it. Now once we've passed it to the root stack, we want to access the value in the root stack. Once we get hold of the value in the root stack, that will determine what we are going to show to the user. So let's visit the root stack. 
So at the top of the root stack, we need to import the contest and it will be the same as the app.js. But in this case, we need to go back a directory. Once we have that, if you want to assess the values of a contest, we need to create a consumer. And just like how we use the provider, we are going to wrap the navigation container in a credentials contest or consumer. This will make it possible to consume or assess the values that you have stored in the contest. But unlike the provider, the child of the consumer should be a function. Now as argument, we can assess the values in the contest, in this case the stored credentials, so we destructure it. Once we've done that, we can pass the navigation container as the child of the function. Now we've gotten to the most important part. Now what we are going to do is that, based on the stored credentials values that we have here, if any tangible value exists in it, we are going to move straight to the welcome screen, otherwise we return the login and sign up screen to the user. So inside the stack navigator, we will check for the value of the stored credentials. So if the value has been set, we will return the welcome screen. Otherwise, we will return the stack of the login and sign up screens. So we wrap this in a fragment. Once we've done that, whenever the stored credentials has any tangible value, the app will move straight to the welcome screen. But if the value is now, the login and sign up screens will be presented. Also, since we want to set the values into the async storage and also the contest whenever we sign up or sign in, we need to add that feature to the sign up and login screens. So let's visit the login screen and implement the async storage feature. So once again, we import async storage and also our credentials contest. We can copy them from the app.js. For the credentials contest, we need to go back a directory. Now below the Google sign in, let's create another function. We will call this persist login. Inside this function, we will set our credentials into the async storage and also update the value of the contest. So as parameters, we will first take the credentials. Also, we will take the message and the status. Now once the credentials is passed to it, we will call the async storage. Now we will use the set item method. The first argument we provide is the key, and we have to make sure that it's the same as the one we used in our app.js. As a second parameter, we pass our data, and that will be the credentials, but we'll stringify it using JSON. This will once again return a promise. And we will handle the catch block as well. For the error, we will log it to the console and also display it using the handle message. Now once we are in the den block, it means that everything was successful. So we can go ahead to set the success message and also update the values of our credentials contest.
remember we are getting this function from the context but we have not defined it yet so let's do it to do that we'll make use of another hook which is known as use context it can be used in place of the context consumer in our component here it will be cleaner if we make use of that instead So before the handle login, I'll make use of it. So from it, we can destructure our context values, which is the stored credentials and also set stored credentials. Now as an argument, we will pass the credentials context that we imported. Now we need to make use of the persist login in our handle login and also handle Google sign in. So inside the handle login, at the portion where we navigate to the welcome screen, we will make use of persist login. The first argument will be the data and we'll follow it with the message and the status. Now once we do this, we don't need to navigate to the welcome screen manually. Once our store credentials value updates, the stack will automatically display the appropriate screen which will be the welcome screen. Now we'll do something similar in the handle Google sign in. Once again, at the point where we navigate to the welcome screen. The first argument will be the data. So we can just cut and paste it. We'll follow it with the message and the status. Once we've done that, we can get rid of the handle message and also the set timeout. Good. Now we'll do something similar for the sign up. So we start by importing a sync storage and also our credentials contest. We'll copy it from the login.js file. Also, we import the use contest. Now, from the login.js again, let's copy when we created the contest variables. Once we have done that, let's copy the persist login function. It's exactly the same, so there is no need to type it again. Now at the portion where we navigate to the welcome screen, we will do exactly the same as we did in the login. But in this case, we get rid of the index and also the navigation command. Now once we've done that, everything should be fine. But now this creates a problem for the welcome.js file. If you remember, we used to pass the data as an argument to the navigation.navigate command. That is, the data that will be used on the welcome page will be passed as we are moving to the welcome page. But now we are no longer moving manually to the welcome page. This means that the welcome.js file should also tap into the contest and access the values directly from there. So let's go to the welcome.js file and give it access to the contest. So once again, we import async storage and also our credentials contest. copy the wrong thing. It should rather be the imports. Now 
now let's import use context from React. Once again, we'll copy the line that we used to create the context variables. Now what we do is that all these values that we are distracting from the route of params, we will do that from the stored credentials instead. And this should come below the contest. Now we can get rid of this and also the route. We can even get rid of the navigation as well. Now the last function that we want to create is a clear login function. We will create this and pass it to the logout button that we have here. Now the first thing we do is to clear the data from the async storage. So we use async storage dot remove item. Let's copy the key of our data. For values like this, it is advisable to copy so that you don't make any typo which will create issues. And this returns a promise as well. And we also handle the catch block. Now once you are in the then block, it means that the item has been removed successfully. So now we're going to set the content of our store credentials contest to an empty string or now. So now let's pass the clear login to the logout button. Let's change the C to a small letter. So now we save and run our application in our emulator, hoping that you don't get any errors. So now let's try to log in. First, we we'll use some invalid credentials. see the invalid credentials error message. Now let's put some valid credentials. Now the login has worked successfully. Now how do we know that our async storage is working successfully? Now let's close the application and open it again. Now on opening the application again, we see that the app goes straight to the welcome page and all the details of the current user are being displayed. 